Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Um, it is currently Thanksgiving day, so happy Thanksgiving. I'm in this morning, I'm in my PJs. I just wanted to do like a cozy November wrap up real quick before the end of the month. Um, so just keep watching and hopefully you guys enjoy. Okay, so I did have my eyes so I can figure out kind of where I'm going with this because I just didn't know it's Thanksgiving day. For the month of November, I read Without Merit. I started the month with this book, and as I said in my previous videos, I really did enjoy this book. Now, like with all Colleen Hoover books, I recommend you look up Trigger Warning because in this book, they do speak about some type of trauma, mental health issues, a suicide attempt. So if those things are triggering to you, I do not recommend you read this book. Now, this book is about Merit, and Merit lived in a house um, with her father, her stepmother, her mother, her older brother, her half-younger brother, her twin sister, her half-uncle, oh, I'm like, not half-uncle, her step-uncle, and this guy who works for her father, who she had believed in the beginning of the story was her sister's boyfriend. Now, they have a very unique family dynamic because her mother lives in the basement of the home that they all live in, and they actually live in a house that used to be a church. And that's a whole story in this book about how her dad got that house. So in this story, Merritt has, um, she's in high school and she decided to stop going to school. And she's really felt unmotivated to do anything and she also feels disconnected to her family. She's carrying a lot of their secrets at the end of the book where she's like so sick of carrying all their secrets that she just decides to spill it all and let whatever consequences happen. And she's also holding a secret for her father because her father is actually still have still sleeping with her mother even though he's married to her stepmother. And she always found it weird that her mother um, lives in the basement. Her mom, I think, has like, don't quote me, I think it's called agoraphobia. It's like where you're afraid to like go outside. So her mom is literally like unable to like leave the basement because of these issues. But Merritt kind of holds that against her mother because it's like, you can have an affair with my father, but you can't be a mother towards your children. And Merritt feels left out of her sibling's relationship. Like she sees how her twin sister is super close to her older brother. Also, I feel like Merritt can't be close to her older brother because of this secret that he's made her keep all this year. This secret he's made her keep all of these years. So she kind of holds that against him without knowing that she's actually holding that. Now, against. when her step uncle moves in and he's a really interesting character in himself like he does not care what other people think of him like i think he wears like skirts like he's a very out there character he's someone who pays a lot of attention to merit and her step uncle is actually the one who approaches her and is like hey i think you might have depression and i think you have depression so take this and you know take this little like checklist and see if it if it pertains to you. So in a nutshell, this book is about family dynamics. Merit has to keep secrets from everybody else about her parents having an affair, even from her stepmom, which she doesn't 100% get along with, but still doesn't believe her parents' affair should be happening. She also keeps secret her sister. <laughs> All right, this is like a like really weird in the book but I found it extremely interesting she believes her, her sister is a well, I forget the word but it's like someone who's obsessed with people dying because her sister only dates guys who are like deathly ill so she's in chat room talking to guys who are terminally ill and Merit thinks like this is an issue like my sister should not be solely looking after um, solely looking for guys who are on their deathbed like she should try more um, alive people but nobody in the family wants to dress it and Merritt feels like she's slowly going crazy um, because she feels like this is an issue and she also has her own depression that she is unaware of. And what I really liked about this book is 
you didn't only see the family dynamic and you know all the drama but you also saw the aftermath like the forgiveness the rebuilding the working together the next book i read in november is another colleen hooper book so i did buddy read this book with my best friend and we both really enjoyed this i think we both gave it a four out of five and this book is about layla and leeds layla and leeds meet each other at her sister's wedding she's having her wedding at this bed and breakfast and he is one of the musicians in the band that's playing for the wedding when Leeds initially meets Layla, it's literally for him love at first sight. From the day he meets her, he knows he's going to spend the rest of his life with her. She ends up moving in with him. Now what Layla doesn't know is that Leeds kind of has this obsessed fan um, slash stalker. And he dated her before he had met Layla. So one day on social media, you know how we all get. Leeds just wants to post his new relationship, so he does, but then he realizes like it's not a good idea, so then he takes it down like a few minutes later. But that's all it took for Sable, that's the stalker girl's name. Mm, this might be a little too light for me, but we'll make it work. After he posts Layla, Sable, so Sable sees the Instagram post. And then ends up showing up to the house. But obviously, Leeds and Layla don't know what's Sable. So Layla opens the door and all Leeds hears is a shot. So Layla gets shot in the head. Suffers like traumatic brain injuries. Um, she needs to like learn how to walk and speak. And Leeds is by her side through all of this. Because he does feel part guilty that it was his fan who had done this. But also he you know this is the love of his life like he has a ring he he wants to propose to her but ever since the accident leads realizes that Layla isn't who she used to be before the accident which he feels like that's granted because of everything she went through like he can't expect her to be her old self after a while Leeds decides to plan a vacation at the bed and breakfast that they originally met at so that they can get back to who they were in their relationship like he really misses how him and Layla used to be like he doesn't like how much this accident has changed her and he just kind of wants to fall back in love with her so he decides to go back to the place where he met her and initially fell in love with her so that they can fall back in love with each other. So this bed and breakfast has actually closed down and Leeds reaches out to the realtor so that he can um, still rent it out for a couple days while it's on the market to be sold. When they get there, they stay at the old room that they stayed when they first met and they have like groceries delivered there so that they can cook for themselves since now there's no staff there anymore now from the beginning of when they get there they start to realize that well not them but Leeds starts to realize that there's a lot of weird unexplainable things that happen like one and I, I've, I've used this example before but one time he was making dinner and he went upstairs to check on Layla and he smelt like there was a fire happening downstairs so by the time he got downstairs he realized that the towel that caught on fire was moved to the sink with running water and he 100% knows he didn't leave the kitchen like that. Things also start to move so he feels like there is something else in the house with them. Now when I first saw reviews of this book um, people described it as a paranormal love story and I did not know how I would feel about that because I don't really like paranormal I'm very um, superstitious so I feel like I don't really want to mess with ghosts because I don't want ghosts to mess with me so I just didn't know how I would feel about a story like this but it's actually really good this is definitely one of my top five Colleen Hoover books. At the end of the day, this is um, a really amazing love story. This book is My Dark Vanessa, and this book I actually picked up because more to marry, and again, I'm speaking about her again because I really love her. Like, I love her recommendations. Like, I, I will watch all her videos. I love it. But she recommended this book, and I'm going to tell you now that this book is is not a love story like do not go into this thinking that this is gonna be a cute love story it's not I'm gonna get into it now this is about 
a teacher called Jacob Strange and his student Vanessa and in this book it has dual timelines so you see Vanessa in the present coping and dealing with accusations of one of her high school teachers that she was very close with and actually built a relationship with. So like I said, this is dual timeline. So you see her in the present dealing with these accusations from these other girls accusing him of grooming and um, sexual assault. Now this jumps to the past where you see Vanessa's relationship with her teacher develop. And at the time, she is 15 years old and he is in his mid-40s. Her teacher, you know, when he called her up to give her like criticism on a paper and like he sat and went over the paper with her, like he just tapped her knee and like to her, it felt some type of way, but because it was so discreet and small, like a, like such a small gesture, she didn't think much of it, but that's actually like, I mean, I don't want to say like every teacher is like that, but it was actually him trying to like feel her out and beginning to start grooming her and see like how much he can get away with. You see her in the past, a 15 year old girl, and this guy giving her extra attention. Now, she is a loner, she has no real friends, and she goes to like this boarding school that she begged her parents to let her go to, so they let her go because it has really good reviews and I think it was one of the one of the famous school shootings that just happened. I don't know if it's the Columbine shooting or whatever. So parents were like, let's send her to this school. It's safer than, you know, a regular public high school where something like this can happen to her. This teacher, you know, I don't want to say he picks her out, but I feel like he does. Like he realizes that she has no friends and she's alone. So he sort of chooses to like befriend her. You should definitely watch more to Mary's in-depth video about this book. I watched her review on the book and then I read the book. Like I didn't care. One of the frustrating things for me in this book was that she, even in her adult life, did not see how her relationship with this professor was wrong in any kind of way. He was really manipul manipulative towards her. Like at one point in her high school year, she had gotten caught, like they had kind of gotten caught and he made her feel bad so she took all the blame said like she had an uncontrollable crush on him and it was all her fault like he didn't do anything appropriate she got kicked out the school for and it was one of her favorite schools like she literally gave her parents a presentation as to why she should go to that school and she didn't blame him and if she did he literally turned it on her like no it was your idea to blame it on yourself and you knew the consequences so he was really manipulative towards her and she didn't realize that some of the choices she made like she would talk to older guys like really older guys was because of the influence she had from this guy so even when she got kicked out of the school he still continued having a relationship with her and her parents were always suspect about it but she always denied it so they always just took her word for it and she never wanted to talk about it so there was nothing they could do even as an adult when these girls are coming forward she wants to not believe them she wants to say like oh they're over exaggerating they're calling themselves victim even though she had the worst because he fully groomed her and he fully took advantage of her and made her believe like that their relationship was consensual and it was love she never wanted to be labeled as a victim so when these girls are coming forward and asking for support she is angry she's like absolutely not i am not one of you i do not i would it was a consensual thing from me but she doesn't realize that at 15 years old you can't consent to stuff like that with a 40 something year old man and there were other things he did to like groom her like he gave her book of lolita and you know let her believe like that that was the kind of relationship they had and it was completely normal and that the world was just like not ready for something like that like as she gets older because she still stays in contact with him like her whole life since she's met him he like stops being with her and sleeping with her because she 
was like too old like I think like when she was like around 25 he like wanted to cut the relationship off and like just be friends and he knew like he had things wrong with him as well Vanessa went through a lot and even after the relationship ended like the relationships choices that she made after that like everything kind of was affected by this one event in her life and the crazy thing is in the beginning of the book you see how much potential she had like she had potential to be like this amazing writer like she was so passionate and then you just see all of that kind of fall apart as her life continues and this relationship with this guy slowly destroys her spirit and what i appreciate that this book did is that it didn't romanticize the teacher like it made him out to be like a normal you know kind of chubby 45 year old man with green hair like it didn't romanticize him to be a handsome guy like it made him feel as realistic as possible Vanessa always so. felt like this relationship was wrong but she just couldn't comprehend she just couldn't put two and two together like why it was wrong like she just always felt like it was wrong but he was always telling her that it was okay so I felt like you saw that conflict within her throughout this whole book Okay, so my camera died, so I just did my hair real quick, just a simple little bun. Next book I'm going to talk about is The Kiss Quotient. This is another book I read in November. Now, with this book, I really wanted to read because it is so hyped. Instagram and YouTube, so I needed to see what the hype was about. I really did like this book book is about Stella and Michael. Stella has a mild form of autism, which is called Asperger's. And she's very successful in her career. She works in Ecometrics. But her parents really want her to get in a relationship and find someone and settle down. For Stella, this is kind of difficult with having Asperger's. So she f knows that she's socially awkward when it comes to dating. So to help her overcome these issues, she decides to hire an escort so she can be better in bed so she can land a husband. So she ends up hiring Michael and automatically you fall in love with Michael. He is so sweet, so patient, even though he is an escort. From their first night together, Michael can tell that there's something different about Stella. He doesn't know exactly what, so he doesn't want to rush her into anything and after their first night together Stella wants to hire him for more lessons and he usually doesn't see clients more than one time but for her he makes the exception and then you see them start to build this relationship this is a super cute rom-com is obviously very spicy because she hires an escort so if spice is not your thing do not read this book you literally just fall in love with the way Michael treats Stella because he's such a good guy and he doesn't believe that he's a good guy because he has issues with his father and he thinks he's more like his father than he wants to admit but he's literally the total opposite. Now this is part of a series and I do plan on continuing the series so I have The Bride Test to read next and then The Heart Prince. I literally almost forgot about the next book and I can't believe I forgot about this book because I just finished this book. This book is a 5 out of 5 for me. This book was so amazing and I know this was hyped up like this was hyped up on BookTok, BookTube, Instagram and I was like what is the hype between this book and I've had it for like two months now and I'm like I'm gonna read it I need to read it but I didn't get to reading it and when I read this it made me cry it made me feel things like this book was so is good. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and this book is obviously about Evelyn Hugo and it's her telling the story of her seven husbands and she's telling this story to kind of so we can figure out who the love of her life was. Now she's telling this story to this reporter Monique and when she agreed to sign up for this interview because she's a very popular artist and tons of people would love this exclusive on her, she specifically wanted Monique 
to tell this story like she did not want anyone else even anyone who is more qualified than Monique so while you're reading this book you also want to find out who the love of her life is because that's the main point of the book but you also want to find out why did she choose Monique out of all her it got like instantly you fall in love with Evelyn Hugo you think that she's such a badass you feel for her and how she had to survive in a time that was not accepting her the way she was this book was so beautifully done and if I had to recommend any books out of the ones I read for the month of November it would definitely be The Seven Half Spins of Evelyn Hugo. So the next book that I did read this month was a historical a historical romance sorry a historical romance by Tessa Dare and it's The Duchess Deal. Now this is the first time I read a historical romance and I did not know how I was gonna feel about them. I absolutely love them. I have bought every book so far that's out in this series and then I also have some other historical romance series that I'm about to start but I want to finish the Girl Meets Duke series because it is so so good. Now this book I did give a five star. I absolutely love this book. It's about the Duke of Ashbury and Emma and Emma shows up to the Duke of Ashbury's front door because she wants payment on a wedding dress that she made for a wedding that was supposed to happen. Wedding gets called off but Emma had already made the dress. She already spent the money to buy the fabrics and already put in her labor time. So she still wants to get paid even though the wedding's not happening. So when she comes to him for her payment, he gives her another um, proposition. He's like, hey, I will marry you and make you duchess, which will elevate your position. You won't have to work no more. If you promise to give me one heir. At first, Emma thinks that this guy is completely joking like he can't be serious he has to be joking so she denies him and she takes her payment of the dress and goes back to her dress shop at her dress shop she has this high boy girl that comes and gets dresses made from her and she realizes that she has to take out her dresses which can only mean that she's pregnant because she has to take out her waistline but she's unwed so during this time period that's really frowned upon and the family can possibly disown her so she starts to consider more the Duke's proposal because she can actually help this girl out which Emma really feels for because she went through a similar situation which is why she was um, kind of like middle class high born but now she has to work in a dress shop to make ends meet. So she starts to contemplate more the Duke's um, proposition. Now the Duke comes to the dress shop and propositions her again like hey marry me and I will give you whatever you want and she's like I he said I will even give you a house on the countryside and in her mind she's like that'll be perfect for the girl to give birth in and then we can hide her birth so she agrees she's like fine yes I will have you as my husband so the thing about the Duke of Ashbury is that his previous fiance left him because he was in a war accident so half of his body is completely scarred and he finds himself to look like a monster so he treats people the way they kind of see him so he treats he acts like a monster like he's grumpy and I love that in this book it's literally a grumpy sunshine so he's like grumpy and upset because of his accident and she doesn't see him any different than she sees any other guy like she sees that he's an attractive guy who was just in an accident so she doesn't want to sorry <laughs> she doesn't want to treat him any different before they get married he makes the proposition that she will provide him with an heir and she's like okay I have my terms too you'll have dinner with me every night and when we get married you'll give me a wedding kiss and he's taken aback by her terms but he agrees to them he's like whatever she'll see like who I really am just like everybody else does but I think he actually misjudges her because she is very persistent like she treats him regular and that really bothers him he's like you know you're kind of deceiving me making me feel like you can see me like a regular person when clearly the rest of the world can't and my last fiance literally cried and threw up when she saw me after my accident and we were supposed to get married and she said she couldn't because I was so hideous and you're just here treating me like a regular guy so he's really distrustful towards her because of that like he feels like she's just acting apart when genuinely she's not she really does start to like him and see the good nature in him for the rest of this book 
I love the banter between the two of them. Like it made me laugh. It it it's really one of my favorite romances. It's so cute. It's grumpy sunshine, one of my favorite tropes. And I love how persistent Emma is until the end where she just can't take like his down and out luck like he's just feeling sorry for himself all the time she can't take it anymore she's like i'm done and then he it finally clicks for him like when he loses her like wow i i have been looking at this all wrong like i've been misjudging everything and then he needs to work to win her back and it's absolutely amazing i love this book if i had to recommend a historical romance i definitely would recommend the duchess deal because it is amazing okay so the second book in the girl me meets duke series is the governess game now both of these books do have spice the first one does have a lot more this one doesn't have as much so if you don't like that you don't have to read them concurrent you should because the characters in this one they actually initially meet in the first one and they actually reference their meeting a lot in this book and the characters in this book Alexandria she's actually friends and gets introduced in the first book from Emma so this book is about Alexandria and Chase and Alexandria is a working girl she fixes the upper classmen's people's clocks so she goes into Chase's house to offer her services of adjusting their clocks to the correct clock time and he thinks she's there about the job of governess for two little orphan girls that he has in his guardianship. When she sees Chase, she realizes that this is the guy she ran into in the bookstore and she's not sure if he remembers her. Again, that's happened in the first book. But she immediately recognized him because she never forgot the encounter in the bookstore because she was instantly attracted to him. But when she realizes that he's literally just poaching her for the job of governess she denies it and walks away but an accident happens and she loses her clock working tools so she actually goes back and takes the job of governess so she's the governess of two little girls and these two little girls you can tell absolutely adore chase but they've been abandoned so many times that they are distrustful of her and him so she does her best to get the trust of them and she also does her best to try to convince chase to keep them and not send them away to boarding school because he feels like he's so messed up that he can't take care of anything like something happened in the past where he was responsible for a family member's life and he unfortunately lost that family member so ever since that point he's carry that guilt and doesn't think he's worthy enough of being loved and having responsibility of anybody else's life. Alexandria really takes the time to make him change his mind about that and show him like the importance of trusting yourself and having family. So this one I rated a 4 out of 5. I like the story. It was a really cute romance. I just liked the first okay, one. So to finish up my November wrap up and I'll probably be done with this because I am about 50% of the way through with this book. I'm currently reading Then She Was Gone. I'm currently buddy reading this with two of my friends and we keep checking in with each other about how we feel about this book. So far I am not a fan of this book. Um, I'm about 50% of the way through and nothing has happened. I have just know that the mom, Laura, is like starting a new relationship which she hasn't done since the death of um i don't want to say death her daughter ellie goes missing and then they find her remains like a couple years later of her daughter and so they rule it out as her daughter is dead so there's a lot of unusual stuff that does happen in this book like laura finds a boyfriend after her and her husband separate and he's like perfect like he's too good to be true he has a younger daughter poppy who kind of speaks like a 40 year old woman but she's like i think she's like eight or nine years old like she's really young but she speaks like really old um way above her years so laura finds that kind of weird too but she kind of attributes it to not having a woman in the house since um he is a single dad raising her by himself but then there's like a weird connection between poppy's mom being the tutor of ellie and that was one of the people Ellie were with before she disappeared. So again, we're 50% of the way through and that's all the information I've gotten. Like nothing's really happened. My friend says that it does get good at chapter 30. I think I am, while I'm recording this video, I'm at chapter 28. So I'm going to say right now, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not going to read it yet. 
maybe I'll add this in my next year wrap up. I mean, not next year, end of year wrap up and let you guys know how I really feel about it. Um, I just feel like all the characters are suspicious to me. Like, I don't trust any of them. The next book that I am also currently reading um, alongside that is A Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Now, I've heard a lot of things about this book and I've read a Penelope Douglas book. I read Credence and I liked it. I didn't love it. I liked it. Like, I liked the story. I liked the description. I just didn't like the love triangle square thing going on. Like, I thought that was a little weird for me. But birthday girl by penelope douglas i heard great reviews about it's about this girl jordan and she meets this guy named pike and i'm in the beginning of the story where she meets pike she meets him at a movie theater on the day of her birthday her loser boyfriend hasn't picked her up from work so she decides to go see a movie while she waits for him and she runs into this guy pike and i know because i've read the reviews i know pike ends up being her loser boyfriend's father and I also kind of remember I think from the reviews they said that like the dad's disappointed in his loser son too and how he treats Jordan and I know eventually like Jordan and Pike are gonna end up developing a relationship so I'm really interested in seeing how and where right. that goes. so that's it for my November wrap-up thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed